You know, the same sun that melts wax hardens clay. And that's what we were talking about last time, the varying receptivity of people towards the gospel and um, how certain people under certain, certain circumstances, it causes their hearts to open to the Lord, but other people under the same or similar circumstances, it causes their heart to close to the Lord. It has nothing to do with the Lord. Again, the little uh, saying that I just quoted you, the same sun that melts wax, hardens clay, it depends upon the material upon which the sunlight falls, doesn't it? Okay, and so I trust that if you're watching this, you're probably one of those ones that the Son of God melted your heart in some way uh, or form or fashion, either through hearing the gospel and, of course, through the working of the Holy Spirit and maybe through some circumstances. I believe that God is trying to reach everyone on this planet all of their lives and uh, that he's, he's offering them much more revelation than just what is offered when a preacher happens to pass through their town or they happen to hear a gospel message on the radio. He's talking to them every moment through their conscience and through the creation he's revealing himself, okay? We've talked about those things before. So in any case, many believed in the Lord in Joppa, as we read in Acts 9.42, now 943, and Peter stayed many days in Joppa with a tanner named Simon. Well, uh, Joppa, modern-day Jaffa, is a lovely, lovely place on the Mediterranean. I've been there, and uh, you know, there's the Mediterranean Ocean right there, bringing in those ocean uh, breezes and so forth, and uh, just a nice coastal city, nice climate, and no doubt Peter stayed there a long time, not because he was vacationing there, uh, or not because he was touring there as I was, but because the door was wide open. Many believed in the Lord, and so now you don't just preach the gospel and get people saved. You disciple them. You teach them to obey all that Christ commanded. And so there isn't any doubt that's what Peter was doing. But he didn't stay there forever, did he? No, he moved on once his job was done. Once he'd raised up leaders and so forth and the church could make it, then he could move on. And we read about him moving on, starting in Acts chapter 10. And I want to preface this chapter by saying, if, if, if there are some chapters that are more significant than other chapters as far as, you know, the significance of the, the, of the historical events, the spiritual significance uh, in the book of Acts, this is a biggie. I, this is on par, if we're going to grade them, with Acts chapter 2, when the church was birthed in Jerusalem on the day of Pentecost, when the disciples were baptized in the Holy Spirit. This is the beginning of a story that has continued right on through today, where uh, the story of how Gentiles were brought in to the family of God. And there's so many interesting facets to this story that start in Acts chapter 10 that we'll be talking about on and off again for a long time, I'm sure, because this same theme is addressed in the epistles. If you don't uh, have a conception of this theme, you can misinterpret a lot of what's in the epistles because you, know, you have to read the epistles within the backdrop of the current situation and what was happening at the time. And that's the benefit of doing what we're doing, reading through the New Testament chronologically, because we're going to stop here in, at the end of Acts chapter 10, right around the beginning of chapter 11, and we're going to go to one of the epistles because we're going to read it about the time within the book of Acts when it was written, and you'll see it fits in there. And you'll also see how the other early epistles relate to what we're about to read in Acts chapter 10 about you know the whole Gentile Jew issue. And basically, fundamentally, here's what you need to know. Back in those days, no Jew dreamed that a Gentile could, you know, have a relationship with God like them. Yes, uh, Gentiles could become proselytes. Yes, Gentiles could get involved and so forth. And they had an esteem for Gentiles who did, you know, begin to uh, uh, keep uh, uh, God's commandments and so forth. We're about to read a, a guy who fit that description perfectly. But the average Jew, you know, 
n n never really occurred to them that you know Gentiles would ultimately be included in God's kingdom. They were looking for the day when the Messiah came, set up his kingdom in Jerusalem, uh, exalted Israel of all the nations. The Jews would be the top guys instead of the low guys, and th they would be ruling over the Gentile nations, and that's what they were looking for. The Gentiles were dogs. The Gentiles were dirty. The Gentiles were filthy. The Gentiles were without law, you know, and, and uh, you know, and we'll, again, we'll talk about some of those things as we continue. All right, so here we launch off into Acts chapter 10 and verse number one. Now, there was a man at Caesarea. May I just mention with you, Caesarea is another coastal city right up the coast north of Joppa. I'm going to guess maybe 20, 25 miles or so. You can see the ancient ruins there still today. It was a marvelous city built in honor of one of the Caesars and so forth. Big old Colosseum there, uh, uh, amphitheater there. You can still see it and, and uh, lots of interesting stuff, okay? Here's a man at Caesarea named Cornelius, a centurion, so that means he's a Roman soldier, he's an Italian guy uh, who is, is responsible for a hundred men under him, centurion, of what was called the Italian cohort. Some Bible version says the Italian battalion, a little rhyming there. Now listen to this description, which is so interesting, and I wish we had more time this time, but next time we will. A devout man, whoa, a Gentile, a devout Gentile, and one who, listen, feared God. Not feared the Roman gods, you know, those guys that all the Romans worship, their pantheon of gods, who feared the true God with all his household. And which God was this? This is the true God. He gave many alms to the Jewish people and he prayed to God continually. So he's tied in with the Jews. All right, all right, we're not out, we're out of time. Next time, we're gonna dive into the story big time. Don't miss it, okay, can't wait. See you then. Heavenward 7 is made possible by the financial support of viewers like you. Thank you.